quick things before we get into today's story time. So today's story time is about bullying, but I would like to say in no way, shape or form do I condone bullying, okay? But I am not going to lie. While I was reading through this story, I did laugh at a few things. So if I'm laughing, just don't take that the wrong way, please. Um, I just have a really bad sense of humor <laughs> and I'm very childish. So I kind of laugh at things that shouldn't be laughed at. I don't laugh at the bullying part. There's just a part in there where um, I just can't keep my composure. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try for you guys, but still. Story time about Becca the bully. So a little background information. I was 16 and in 10th grade. So I had been in the same school all my life. And I've also had all of the same friends. I never like switch friend groups, you know, or anything like that. So for my parents to say in the middle of the school year, like, hey, um, we have to leave for my job. I was pretty pissed off. And with that being said, I was pretty excited only because we lived in, I guess you could say the country. Probably not, maybe I'm over exaggerating, but still. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, background information about my life at home before I had moved. I was pretty much the baddest bitch in my school. Like my girls and I ran the school for as long as I can remember. This low key sounds like a mean girl movie. What the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, basic bitches wanted to know me or be me and I never had a problem with getting any single guy that I wanted because all of them liked me. This girl's pretty uh, cocky, I would say. But okay, sis, go off. We were super respected and kind of um, feared, I would say, even by the teachers because my parents were very important people. Well, pretty much my friends and I's parents were very important people. I'm not even gonna lie, we were really mean, especially to this one girl who ended up moving schools. She ended up going out with one of my best friend's boyfriends and when we confronted her about it, she said that she had no idea that they were even together, which is a complete lie because they would walk around the school holding hands and everything like that. But okay, a lot in my face. So literally in um, eighth grade, we put bird shit in her hair. I'm sorry, this is the part where I just can't keep it together. We put bird shit in her hair and called her, I'm a terrible person, bird turd Becca. And listen, I don't give a fuck who you are. If you put bird shit in my hair, it's on site for everybody. Your mom, you, your dad, anybody, I swear to God. Anyways, back to the story. I definitely regret that now looking back at it, but nothing ever happened. We never got suspended or anything like that. And that just really shows how much power we had in this school. Like we could just make people disappear like that. But anyways, like I said, new city, new me, leave the old in the past, right? That was the plan here. I would say the first couple weeks were okay. Nothing major happened, but weird things would happen here and there. Just things that weren't in the ordinary. But I would say about a month into me being at this school is whenever things kind of took a turn for the worst. The one day while I had been in gym class, I went back to the locker room and my clothes were missing. So I had to wear sweaty gym clothes the rest of the day. But then after that, even more shit started happening. And I thought that could have been a coincidence. I was like, okay, like maybe somebody just stole my clothes. You know, people are like that. So I have took this two hour test for history class. And after I was done with the test, I took it up to the bin and I put it in. Well, the next day, whenever I go into history class, my teacher tells me that I never turned in the test and that I have to take it again. And I'm sitting there like, what the hell are you talking about? Like I put it in and then people after me went up and put their stuff in the bin. And after you take the test, you can't look at your phone or anything. So the only thing I really had to do was sit there and just watch people put their tests in the bin wondering when I could go on my phone again. So I was like, whatever, at this point I really had no choice but to take the test again. And also, um, weirdly enough, so in the morning, whenever you got to school, you had to go and you had to check in on um, this iPad, right? And you had to like show your student ID every time. And only one student was allowed in there at a time. So you had to kind of go in one at a time. It was only for the students that drove to school too. So I would go in there and then the freaking door would be locked and I couldn't go out to, you know, get into the hallway. And it was weird. So I had to like stay in there, wait, kind of pound on the door and somebody would have to come by and unlock it. So it was like that kind of weird stuff that was happening. 
And the worst thing that happened was the one day I'm sitting in my math class and all of a sudden a security guard comes and says that they need to see me. They walk me down to the office and the principal tells me like, hey, like somebody came and told us that you were handing out test answers to people and that you were cheating on tests and stuff like that. And they even had my history teacher there who was like, yeah, like her test did go missing, you know, like missing. He was being a dick. And they were like, so we searched your locker and we found um, one of the Scantrons with all of the test answers bubbled in. So of course I told them, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like nobody's out here stealing no test answers. Like, I don't need that. Like, I was smart. I got A's just because I'm smart, duh. So, of course, because I couldn't prove that I didn't know what the hell they were talking about, I got suspended for two weeks and they gave me an F for the rest of the semester for that class. Lovely. Mind you, I had never gotten an F in my life. I've always had... Can you stop? I've always had A's and B's. I mean, out of all this going on, there was one thing that made it better. I had met this boy, and funny thing, he was actually one of the first people that I met at this school. Eventually, after a few weeks of knowing each other, we decided to start dating. We got along super well, and after I told him about the whole suspension thing, he said that he would come and visit me every day of my suspension after school, but he never showed up, of course, because what? Men ain't shit, period. And I would say the worst thing was, is the sixth day of my suspension, I had went to school to grab some papers and I had to go into each of these classes to get them. Well, when I'm walking in the hallway, I see him kissing some other girl. I mean, not that weird to be honest. Like we said, men are shit, they cheat, is what it is. I went home, I texted him, we're done. But then later that day I'm on Instagram and I realized I was tagged in a picture. And the caption of this picture said bird love with a bunch of laughing emojis, which I was like, what the fuck why was I tagged in this? Nothing really was making too much sense. But after my suspension was over, I went to school with my parents and we all decided that it was time for me to switch schools. My parents were pissed off too because they told the school like she's never done this. If you look back on, you know, like everything from the previous school that she was in, no bad notes or anything like that, right? But as soon as they heard that I was willing to switch schools, they were like, all right, you know, yes, you probably should do that. They did not disagree. So pretty much after I left that meeting, everything became quite clear to me on what the hell was going on. So of course, because I had like three days left of school before I switched schools, I went to gym class and I went into one of the stalls to change. And while I'm getting changed, um, quite literally a bucket of bird shit comes falling over the one side of the stall. It gets all over me. It's like in my hair, in my eyes. It was quite disgusting actually. I went blind for probably four minutes and all I could hear was laughing on the outside of the stall door. So I tried opening one of my eyes to grab a piece of clothing that thankfully didn't have bird shit on it. I wiped my eyes, opened the stall and realized that the girl that I bullied from my school was the one who was doing all this shit to me. She was standing there laughing with her friends and I went to walk out of the stall so that way I could probably like beat her when all of a sudden the stall gets slammed back at my face, hits me in the head and I fall and I'm like screaming at this point. Thankfully they had showers in the locker room so I ran over to the shower. I wasn't gonna tell any of the teachers about it because listen, the teachers like to gossip, and I wasn't about to have everybody knowing that I got bird shit poured all over me, even though there's probably a video on it somewhere on the internet. We don't know. But um, I was pretty livid, to say the least. And usually after gym class, we would all take a shower. So I grabbed my shower shit, went into the shower, and the only clean clothes that I had at this point were my gym clothes, but I just skipped school after that. Like, it wasn't happening. I wasn't about to fucking walk into gym class and act like everything was okay when it really wasn't. But the next day, whenever I went into school, um, there was a whole meeting on why one of the stalls were filled with bird shit. And of course I told the teachers because excuse me you're not about to get away with bullying me you got me fucked up like sorry girly so she got suspended 
And then of course I told the teachers that she's the one who's been doing all this crazy shit to me. Of course they thought it was some conspiracy or whatever. But then they had checked the cameras in the hallway and saw her going in and putting the test answers in my locker and stuff like that. But I guess at the end of the day, I did get a taste of my own medicine. I mean, Becca was my bully the whole time and I didn't even know. All the pranks and, um, I'm sorry, pranks and dirty games that she was playing, I completely walked into. So, I mean, good for her, you know. She got me. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I am really thankful, I guess, because I learned a lot from her, and to this day, I don't judge or bully, I listen and help, because at the end of the day, no one person is better than the other. But I decided to stay at that school instead of moving. Like I said, I told the principal about all the shit. She got suspended, she came back, and at the end of the day, her and I did end up becoming really good friends. Okay, everybody, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more of me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna know whenever I post my next video, make sure to hit that bell. But other than that, I will see you guys next time. So for context, my female 29 boyfriend 34 is a doctor. Most of his friends are from work and they all seem to dislike me and act distant. Maybe because I'm not a doctor too. I don't know and I don't care honestly, but since we started dating they've been asking to hang out without me and they leave any event I'm at. My boyfriend said they're just taking their time to get used to me. Anyways, his birthday was days ago, I'd arranged for the party and paid for everything. It wasn't a surprise since the party was held at the restaurant and he needed heads up to invite his doctor friends. We got there, then his friends started arriving. They greeted him and started shaking his hand and hugging him while completely ignoring me, though I was there next to him. The tension started when one of them began making remarks about how I dressed. I sucked it up, but another friend started interrogating me about my degree and implying I was ignorant for my food choice. What? An hour later, another one asked if I could leave because they wanted to discuss work stuff and it's confidential. I was so shocked, I laughed, asking why he thought it was appropriate to discuss work during a party, and he replied that I had an attitude. An argument ensued and they demanded that I leave, but I said no. My boyfriend finally spoke up after it escalated and asked that I keep the peace and go home, but I refused and reminded him and let his friends know that I'd arranged for this party and paid for it, so they should leave since they're just guests. He pulled me aside and begged me to go home after they said if I didn't leave they would, but I still refused. So they left, all of them, and the party was cut short. My boyfriend was upset and started complaining at home that I ruined his birthday the minute I started arguing with his friends. I told them they were being disrespectful to me, but he said I was wrong too because they said they wanted to discuss medical stuff and I should have respected that and not made it personal. He's not speaking to me now. I was so hurt I couldn't argue anymore. I felt like I ruined his birthday by making a scene like he said and acting passive aggressive. Am I the idiot? Edit. I refused to leave because I figured they used the medical stuff discussion as an excuse to get me to leave early. My wife and I have two kids, 28 male and 26 female. My wife had been suffering from breast cancer for the past six years. Unfortunately, last year she passed away. When we first found out that she had cancer, I asked my kids for financial help because we had no savings. We had put all our money into our kids' education and my pension wasn't enough to get treatment for my wife. My daughter immediately agreed to help us out and bought a house close to our family home. She'd been taking care of all my wife's treatment expenses. My son, however, said that he had a new family now with his wife and that his wife wasn't comfortable with him taking on his mother's treatment expenses. She also wanted to move to the UK to start a family together. Nothing I said convinced him to stay back for his mother's sake, so I gave up. Even when my wife was dying, he refused to come, saying that his wife was all alone in the UK with the kids and he couldn't leave her alone there. So I asked him to bring the kids and his wife, but he said that his wife didn't want to be around our relatives. That had made me very angry because my wife had always stood up for my daughter-in-law despite all the harsh comments from our relatives, and now his wife didn't want to even say a final goodbye to her. I didn't say anything more and left it at that. Now I've been registering all our ancestral property and assets in our daughter's name. My son contacted me and started saying that I was being harsh and petty towards his wife. My daughter thinks I should just let the issue go and forgive them for what they did. Am I the idiot? This morning, my daughter, Tween, dressed for school in an objectively hideous outfit. Clashing patterns and colours, she legitimately looked like a clown. Usually, I don't say anything about her choice of clothing unless her skirt is too short or whatever, but this outfit looked so bad that I suggested she should change into something different or else she was going to get teased. My daughter said, and I quote, I'm a big girl, I can handle my own business. 
I didn't appreciate the attitude, but I didn't think it was worth an argument, so I let her go to school without changing. She got home tonight and was obviously in a bad mood and was wearing a different sweater that I think she borrowed from a friend. I asked her if anyone made fun of how she dressed, and she sarcastically told me, yeah, everyone was mean. Friend said I'd look like an idiot and everyone kept making fun of me. I said, aw, that sucks, I'm sorry, sweetie. She said, you should be sorry, it's half your fault. Why didn't you make me change? I said, because I thought you could handle your own business, remember? She went into her room and slammed the door. She hasn't talked to me since. So, am I the idiot for letting her wear what she wore? She is still a kid, and I absolutely knew when I saw her clothing that she would get laughed at by her peers. My husband thinks the whole thing is amusing and is telling me not to worry about it, but I'm feeling a little guilty because it sounds like many people made fun of our daughter. I didn't invite my parents to my wedding because they always took my sister's side even when she falsely claimed that my fiancé forced himself on her. My sister, female 28, is the golden child. She could do nothing wrong with my family. She is very beautiful and she got away with everything, even stealing three of my boyfriends in the past. I met my fiancé five years ago. I was in love with him immediately, and I think so was he. That left me reluctant to introduce him to my family, and sister in particular, because he's her type rich and good-looking. After a year of secretly dating him, I was running out of excuses as to why I couldn't meet my family. I literally thought, screw it. If she took him, better now than when I've invested more years on this dude. She acted precisely as I expected. She was flirty from the get-go. Except this time, my fiancé didn't reciprocate and ignored her. One day, my fiancé told me that he was receiving flirty texts from her and even one picture of her in a bra. I confronted her and we had a row in mom's kitchen. She went upstairs crying telling me that if she really wanted him, she would have him. My mom kicked me out and told me it's more my sister's age anyway. About three years ago, I was out of town for work for two weeks. And one evening, my fiancé started a video call on his iPad to show me how he was taking care of my bonsais. He was teasing me pretending he's killing my plans. When the intercom called, it was my sister, so he buzzed her up. I told him to leave me on call to see what she's up to. She had a very short dress and heels. She came on to him, so I started recording. He told her no multiple times that she asked him why he chose a loser instead of her. She then tried to kiss him multiple times, telling him to at least try before saying no. He pushed her away eventually, and she stumbled and fell over our glass coffee table. She started screaming, and my boyfriend panicked and called the ambulance. I was terrified. She had injured her thigh and needed stitches all the way up to her waist. My sister pressed charges and claimed that fiancé tried to violate her, unaware that I have recorded the whole interaction. When the truth came out, my fiancé pressed charges for assault and defamation. She didn't get any jail time but had to pay him a hefty sum, something my parents thought was unfair since they didn't need the money. This ruined my sister and her reputation, so she moved to another city and cut all contacts with everyone, including my parents who took her side all the way. My parents blamed me for ruining her life and bright future and my mom always lamented her and accused me of taking a stranger's side purely to take revenge on my sister for being more popular and successful than me. I went low contact after this. Almost no contact. My relationship with my fiancé didn't change, but it was strained with my soon-to-be in-laws who thought I have brought drama to them, and that their son was on the verge of losing everything because of me. We have a much better relationship now. It took time for them to trust me again. I'm very close with my soon-to-be mother-in-law and sister-in-law, and father-in-law treats me like I was his daughter. In fact, they're paying for the whole wedding. I never told my parents about me getting engaged or about the wedding. My aunt and two cousins are the only ones who are invited from my side of the family. We're having a weekend wedding in Tuscany. My parents are now so indignant that they aren't invited. My mom has been trying to call and text me, but I deleted before even reading. I don't know what to tell her, really. It feels like hate, the thing in my chest, but it can't be possible to hate your own parents. Today my aunt said that my mom is slandering me all over Facebook. It has threatened my aunt by boycotting if she attended. I don't know if I should continue ignoring them or confront them. This is not easy. I don't want it to escalate. My parents prodded me, 23 male, to study hard, earn good grades, and involve myself in extracurriculars throughout high school. They constantly said things along the lines of, look at person A's sister, she's attending Harvard Law, and follow person B's example, he's doing an MBA at Stanford. I did as I was told and was accepted into one of the Ivy League universities. I vividly remember crying out of sheer happiness when I logged into the portal and saw my acceptance letter. 
I thought that my parents would be just as excited as I was. But imagine my shock when they said, we think you should attend state school because it's a lot cheaper and just as good for your major, computer science, as the university. We earn X per month. The mortgage is Y per month. So we must support the family on Z per month. Where's the money for you to attend uni? They logged into their bank account and invited me to do the budget calculations myself. I did them, saw that their numbers added up, and declined my uni offer as much as it pained me. I went to state school for my bachelor's and master's in computer science. I currently work at a well-paying job, which means I'll pay off my student loans relatively quickly. My parents said they'd pay the difference after I took out the max in federal loans per school year. My sister, nearly adult, called in December to tell me that she was accepted early into one of the Ivy League universities. I congratulated her on getting in and asked her if our parents would force her to decline the offer as well due to the cost. She told me that Dad told her not to worry about the cost. I then put two and two together, made an excuse to leave, and hung up the phone. I couldn't believe that I hadn't put two and two together before that moment. My dad has worked at a different well-paid job since 2006. These companies give their employees a lot of stock per year, which meant that when I was getting my college acceptance letters, spring 2016, my dad's shares were worth hundreds of thousands, possibly even millions of dollars. As a result, my dad can pay for my sister's tuition by selling off some of his shares. The next time my parents FaceTimed me, I asked them why they were unwilling to sell some of my dad's shares when I was accepted into a well-paying job. They visibly tensed up and muttered something about how their financial decisions were none of my business. I told them that this was the last time I'd ever speak with them because they were liars who pulled a giant bait and switch on me. This all happened shortly before Christmas. The girlfriend asked me why I've been declining all of their calls lately. After I explained to her why, she told me that she could see why I was angry, but she also told me that I really shouldn't be complaining as I'm in a better financial position than at least 95% of people our age. So, am I the idiot? My girlfriend loves to read, and she gets really involved with the books she's reading, and she usually rants and raves about them. It was never a problem, but about three months ago, she started to read a lot of romance novels. This happened at least twice a week. She started to project things onto me. For instance, if she's mad at someone in the book, she gets mad at me. Some days, she'll tell me not to speak to her and criticize me, and I would be wondering what I did wrong and try to talk to her, and she'll just leave the room. The next day, she'll sheepishly tell me that she'd been mad about something that happened in the book. She also sometimes gets mad at me and points out something really romantic the lead may have done for the woman, and she gets upset at me for not being that romantic. This is easier to deal with as I just have to be romantic and smooth talker a bit, which I love to do anyway. Having to figure if it's a real issue or just her being angry about a book is hard, and she gets even more annoyed if I ask her if it's about the book. So I've just been ignoring it because I never thought it would be a huge issue. I had a horrible day at work, and I was pretty crushed and exhausted. I greeted her, and she ignored me, and I asked if she was actually mad at me or if she was sulking about a book. She told me to screw off. I wanted to tell her how bad it had been, but I really couldn't after she dismissed me like that. I did, and I decided to rest and play games as I was tired and didn't want to cook. So I ordered food for us, and I was gaming when she asked me if I was making dinner, and I told her I was too tired to cook and had ordered food. She loves to eat home-cooked food and is not a fan of eating out in general, and she called me lazy. I snapped that maybe one of her imaginary boyfriends could cook for her because I was too tired to do it. She refused to eat the food I delivered, and she went to bed hungry, and I feel like such an idiot right now. I feel terrible that I upset her, and I know that I should have dealt with this maturely and not insulted her. So, am I the idiot? When I was 21, I got a girl named Kat pregnant. I didn't want the kid or to be part of their lives, but I was pressured by my father to do so, saying stuff like, a man doesn't abandon their woman or child. Kat was happy when I was in her life, but I got scared and left once she gave birth. After my daughter turned one, I went no contact with Kat and my daughter for 16 years. Once I left, my life changed. I started a new career in music, made a lot of money, and recently dated a new woman four months ago. But my father still reminds me of Kat every day, saying how I'm a deadbeat for abandoning her. In addition, my father still sees Kat and my daughter and pays more attention to them than me. This made me jealous. But at the same time, I felt guilty. I felt that I was young and scared, and I didn't have the emotional experience I did now. I wanted to get back in contact with my daughter because of this. She's 18 now, so maybe she wants to see me. Through my father, I was able to get Kat's contacts. I talked to her about life and how things were going. She told me to cut the crap and ask what I wanted. I said to be blunt, I want my daughter back and to build a relationship between you and her again. I want to be a father again. Kat told me she doesn't want me near her daughter and she already has a father. Apparently, when I left, Kat married a man a few years later. She considers him the father. 
She hung up, but I didn't stop there. I actually got my daughter's phone contact from my father. I'll admit I went through his phone. I called my daughter and I explained everything to her, how I wanted her back, how I'm sorry for everything, how I'm ready to be a real father. But she told me to get lost because I hurt her mother and hung up. I was so upset by this and went to my dad about it, how to make things right. He told me just to leave them alone. I want to be part of my kid's life. Sure, I was an idiot back then when I was young, but I'm better now. Am I the idiot? My younger brother Sean is getting married soon. He sent out invitations that included everyone in the family. I found out that he was going by the no plus one unless engaged or married rule. I felt confused since I've been in a long-term seven years now relationship with my girlfriend and I was counting on having her come with me to the wedding. I asked Sean and his fiancée about it and asked if they were aware they were excluding my partner with this rule and they gave a too bad, so sad type of reaction. But I told him, all right, then he shouldn't expect me to come either. He freaked out and called mom, who said since I'm the oldest in the family, my presence at the wedding is a must. So I told them I would attend the wedding under one condition, to have my girlfriend attend with me. Sean tried to pull the she's not official and she's not family crap on me, but I told him enough. I remain calm yet strict with my condition. Mom said my girlfriend can miss one event, no big deal, and said I shouldn't be putting conditions on my brother's wedding to force his hand like that. I said that's all I have and left after a huge meltdown from Mom and Sean accusing me of trying to alter the wedding, disrespecting their beliefs and pushing my own on them. Oh, and went as far as accusing me of planning to steal the event so I could propose to my girlfriend. The rest of the family got into it, yelling at me for disrupting the wedding and trying to control and bully my brother into letting me do what I wanted at his damn wedding. They said it wasn't up to me to put conditions and went on about how I should support him as his only sibling and a father figure since dad is deceased. But I think I'm trying to stand by my girlfriend and our relationship that means so much to me, but they see it as me choosing her over my brother. Am I the idiot? I, 28 male, did not have the best childhood. My parents, 60s, favoured my sister, 30, and gave her everything she needed. She got her first car when she turned 16 years old, all new electronics, and was able to attend her dream school fully paid. Unfortunately, my grandfather got sick when it came time for me to attend school, and I decided to stay and be his caregiver while attending community college. I helped take full care of him until he passed away in 2017 and stayed around to help my grandmother. My parents only showed up to my grandfather's funeral in hopes that they would receive everything when they both passed away. My grandmother was diagnosed with cancer and I helped take her to appointments, cooked meals and cared for the house. She told me that everything would be left behind to me. I was very grateful and promised her that I would take good care of their home. She passed away a few months ago and I was given the house and some money. My sister moved back up to be in town as she struggled financially and was hopeful that there would be money for her. She reached out to me asking if we could meet, and I was very reluctant at first because she went no contact with me. I agreed in hopes that we could maybe build a brother and sister relationship. We met at a local restaurant, and my sister started talking about how she was struggling and pregnant with her ex-boyfriend's child and needed a new car. She asked me if I would be willing to give her some of the inheritance money to use for herself and give some to our parents. I didn't tell her the amount left to me as it wasn't her business. I told her that if she'd spent time with her grandparents before they passed that she might have been left some of the inheritance. She got angry and told me that I had lost the privilege of being an uncle to her daughter. She stormed out of the restaurant and hasn't been in contact with me. My parents found out and they think that I'm wrong for not helping my sister. Am I the idiot for not giving my sister any inheritance from my grandparents? Imagine someone performing facial reconstructive surgery on themselves to evade police after committing a murder. Lindsay Hawker was an English woman who moved to Japan to pursue her dreams of being a teacher. One evening in March of 2007, a man approached Hawker on the train ride home from work. He claimed that she was his English teacher even though she wasn't. He followed her when she got off the train and begged for a glass of water upon arriving to her house. She felt sorry for him and allowed him into her flat but made sure to introduce him to her two flatmates as a precaution. Once he was inside, he drew a picture of her signing it with his name, phone number, and email address. They chit-chatted and agreed to meet for an English lesson at a cafe four days later which was okayed by the school she was employed by. On Saturday, March 24th, Hawker meets up with the man in a cafe for their lesson. Afterwards, he convinces Hawker to catch a taxi to his apartment close by as he forgot his wallet and still needs to pay her. When they arrive, Hawker tells the taxi driver to wait as she's only going to be a few minutes. Seven minutes later, the taxi driver leaves thinking that she changed her mind and decided to stay. However, what happened was much graver and makes you think what would have happened if the taxi driver had just double checked. Things might have turned out differently. A couple days later, Hawker's employers call her family and report that the usually conscientious young woman hadn't reported for work in two days. Her family then calls Tokyo police, but Hawker's flatmates, who had the man's name and contact details, had already alerted police after Hawker didn't come home. 
home. On March 26, two officers pull up to a flat owned by a man named Tatsuya Ichihashi, but aren't permitted to knock without a proper cause. When nine officers show up, Ichihashi, who was inside the apartment all along, makes a run for it. The officers didn't have radio, so they couldn't communicate to each other where he was running to in the building, which allowed him to escape successfully. When police entered his apartment, they were horrified. They spot a bathtub on his balcony. Inside was a mixture of soil and sand, and unfortunately, Hawker's badly beaten body. She had been bound, gagged, and her head had been shaved. After an investigation, it seemed that the man was trying to either bury the body in concrete or wait until it decomposed. He had made six visits to the local hardware store buying the materials in a couple days after the murder leading up to the arrival of police. After his escape, police added him to the most wanted list and went as far as making life-size cutouts of the suspect to raise awareness to the case, but it was no use. Over the next few years, Ichihashi would complete over a dozen facial reconstructive surgeries on himself to avoid getting caught. For the next two years, after brutally assaulting and murdering Lindsay Hawker, a man named Tatsuya Ichihashi was on the run from police and even went as far as performing over a dozen facial reconstructive procedures on himself to evade them. Death Desperate to avoid being captured, he had sliced off part of his own lower lip to make it look thinner, added folds to his eyelids, and cut off moles that appeared prominent in his wanted posters. However, parts of the moles remained which was the reason for his eventual capture. Ichihashi went to a clinic in Nagoya to complete a procedure that would slim and lengthen his nose. Even though he looked different than his wanted posters, the moles he failed to completely cut out prompted the workers at the clinic to send photos of him to police. A few days later, on November 10, 2009, over two years after Hawker's murder, Ichihashi was arrested in Osaka when attempting to board a ferry to Okinawa. He initially refused to cooperate with police and gave no confession. They had to charge him with abandoning a body and served him with two warrants for assault and murder. His lawyer stated that he was threatened with a death penalty if he refused to speak. Finally, on December 23rd, one of his lawyers announced that he had acknowledged his involvement in Hawker's death but stated that he never intended on killing her. He stated that shortly after Hawker entered his apartment, he administered strong blows to her, bound her, and assaulted her. During that time, he accidentally choked her while trying to stop her from crying out for help. He claimed that he called an ambulance while trying to resuscitate her once he realized what he had done, but it was too late. A ruling said that there was no evidence of these claims whatsoever. His trial began in July of 2011. The presiding judge stated that this crime was inexcusable and savage. Hawker's family wanted the death penalty, but prosecutors demanded life in prison. Capital punishments are rare in Japan in cases with only one victim. On the account that he was 32 and lack of previous convictions, authorities believe there was a chance Ichihashi could be rehabilitated. Whether or not he can remains to be seen. He was sentenced to life in prison and under Japanese law will have to wait 10 years before being eligible for parole, which means he'll be eligible this year. Hawker's family was still pleased by the ruling as they had waited so long for justice. In 2013, Ichihashi released a book detailing the two and a half years he eluded police. He offered the royalties to Hawker's family and understandably so, they refused. I was a product of an affair between my mom and dad. My mom was already married and had a one-year-old daughter. She wanted to abort me, but my dad begged her and paid her a hefty sum. She signed over all rights and I didn't see her for my 14 years of life. She recently contacted my dad saying she wanted to get to know me better and he said it's entirely up to me. I was skeptical but decided to meet her. I've been talking to my mom's side for about two months when at a family gathering they all sat me down and said the reason they contacted me was because my half-sister was having kidney failure and was basically dying. At a loss for words, I got up and left. I told my dad and he said it's entirely up to me but I should get tested just to see before I make my decision. So I did. When my mom found out, she thought this was me agreeing and told everyone the good news. I did a lot of thinking and I decided I would not be donating my kidney. This family had done nothing for me. The only reason they tried to get in contact was for my kidney, so I don't want anything to do with them. I got loads of hateful calls and messages, but decided to stand by my decision. My stepsister called me and said I'm a douche for giving her false hope. People are saying I'm wrong because I can save a life. My stepsister did nothing wrong. But I feel so used. Am I the asshole for not giving my sister my kidney? My fiance's girl best friend has never liked me. We were all hanging out when Madison and Michael came out from a room with Madison crying. Michael looks at me and starts swearing and says I'm a raging bitch. Being hormonal and pregnant, I start crying and asking what's wrong. He proceeds to tell me about the text message I sent Madison. I told her I would not allow her near our child. I only sent this text message after the many racist texts she sent me about my child and I, me being biracial and all. Instead of hearing me out, Michael kicked me out of the house that we shared. On my way out, I felt a lower cramp in my abdomen and I thought nothing of this because I was not due for another three weeks. When I flinched from the pain, Michael told me to stop faking. On my way to my mom's, I felt a gush of water and immediately turned the car around so that I would make it to the hospital. 
I tried calling Michael numerous times, but my call was quickly declined. I gave birth to our baby all by myself. I decided to do something and post all the hurtful messages Madison sent me on Facebook. Michael calls me and I inform him about my whereabouts and he shows up 42 minutes later. He has tried to apologize multiple times, but I don't think I can forgive him. I went through the pain of pushing out an eight pound baby all by myself because he chose to listen to his best friend over his fiance. Should I forgive him? This is an ongoing mess that continues to haunt me. My sister is recently engaged to her boyfriend of many years. He proposed to her at one of our family barbecues and I was really happy for them until I saw the ring. My sister had hinted that her and her boyfriend were discussing tying the knot and we discussed rings at length. I went online and searched for the type of ring she said she was interested in and happened across a very unique and pretty ring on Etsy. But it had a fake middle stone. As soon as I saw the ring, I recognized it. Everyone knows they're supposed to spend at least 3-4 to four months paying on an engagement ring. He has a good paying job and 4 months wages for him would be at least 8-10k to 10K at an estimate. I know for a fact that this ring was $450. I waited until the proposal was over and asked the couple for a quiet word, but that had the opposite effect as I was overheard by the entire family. I told my sister I had seen her ring online and it wasn't a real diamond or even expensive. I accused her boyfriend of trying to cheap out of one of the most important gifts of her entire life. She burst into tears and said she gave him a budget of $400. She didn't want a real diamond. She's lost every piece of jewelry she's owned and she didn't want to be devastated by losing this if she ever does. I thought I was doing my sisterly duty by pointing out the fake ring. Am I the asshole for telling my sister? I have a 16 year old babysitter who watches my 4 and 8 year old. She watches my kids from 9 to 7 from Monday through Saturday so I asked if she liked anything stocked up in the pantry or the fridge. She mentioned that she really likes seltzer water and I bought them for the first month but honestly I forgot after a while and never kept any in the fridge. A few days ago I bought hard seltzers for me and my husband and didn't think anything of it. While I'm at work she messaged me to say if I can come home early because she's not feeling well. I asked her to try and hold out until the end of the day. Not too long after, she called me crying, saying that something was wrong and she had to go home. She was drunk, clearly. She had drank the hard seltzers that were in the fridge. I told her to leave and she walked home. She called me the next day crying that she didn't know that the hard seltzers had alcohol in them. Both her parents were alcoholics and she was diagnosed with PTSD regarding alcohol. She never planned on drinking in general. I told her not to come back as she put my children in danger. She says she really didn't know and she cares deeply about my children and would never ever drink or put them in danger. She really can't afford to lose this job. I told her to find a real job and that it wasn't my fault she got drunk. My husband says I'm being very rude and that she did try to reach out when she wasn't feeling well. And my kids are upset to see her go. My boyfriend is really into cars. Recently discovered a charity project where they fix up an old Jaguar and it's worth around $300,000. You could buy a $50 raffle ticket to win the car and the money went towards a good cause. My boyfriend is broke at the moment so I offered to go house with the ticket. He didn't want to because then the car wouldn't be his completely. I wasn't too worried about it and didn't mention it again. I did however buy a ticket for myself. Well, I won and on the first of next month I will be the owner of the car. My boyfriend found out he was really excited until I told him I was going to sell the car and put half of the money in my savings and invest the other half. He said I can't sell our car without consulting him. I told him it's my car and I can do whatever I want. He now claims it was all a big misunderstanding and apparently wanted to go halves but hasn't got around to giving me the money yet. I call BS on it but he keeps saying that we're a couple and we should make this decision together. I still am planning on going ahead and selling the car and keeping the money to myself. I do see a future with him but it was my money and my ticket. Am I the asshole for not wanting to go 50-50 and keeping the money all towards myself? When I was in my 20s, I froze 10 eggs. When my husband and I were ready to have kids, I ended up getting pregnant naturally. I am currently 35 and had my baby a year ago. We do want two more children, so we will likely use a few of the eggs. My sister, who is 30, has a 12-year-old daughter and has recently gotten married. Even though she was young, my sister's first pregnancy was a struggle. She has been told that she will probably not be able to have another baby. So her and her husband asked me if they can have one or two of my stored eggs. I instantly told her no, I would feel really weird about it. I then told her if she paid me a substantial amount of money, I would let her have two eggs. I gave her a price of $5,000. She's really torn up and blaming me for not being able to enjoy sharing a child with her husband. I told her she can find a donor egg somewhere else, but she said she wants a baby related by blood. If she can't afford 5k for the egg, she can't afford another baby. She has now gone to whine to any family member that will listen. My parents have been begging me to help my sister start a family. They said if her husband decides to leave her because he wants kids, it'll be my fault. Other people have been calling me to shame me for not giving her the eggs. I feel for my sister, but these are my eggs. Now I'm sure many of us have encountered little shits in supermarkets. Kids running around, knocking things over, being rude, but the worst are the biters. Today I was shopping in the grocery store when a biter got me. He broke skin too when I started bleeding. When I saw the blood on his teeth and the grin he had, the gear started turning and I got an idea. Made my eyes go wide and started screaming, shit, shit, fuck, no, no. My good friend was there too and he instantly picked up on what I was doing. He started shouting, fuck, maybe he didn't get it, shit. By now, the kid is scared shitless and starts crying. And instantly, his mom appears out of nowhere and starts getting pissy at us for yelling at her kid. Here's the kicker. I look her straight in the eye and say, ma'am, get your son tested as soon as possible. He just bit me and I'm, I'm HIV positive. And now there's silence, not a peep in the entire store. Rat knows he just fucked up big time because his mom isn't defending his ass. 
stares at me wide-eyed and I walk away from them to buy my groceries. All while blood is dripping from my calf, making a nice little trail on the floor. Just as we're about to leave, we start to hear the mom sobbing. Sobbing like the little she is. My best friend is getting married. Neither of us have any sisters, so we're both the closest the other has to one. Her fiancé comes from an extremely mega-Catholic family. She pulled me aside this past weekend and told me I wouldn't be able to go to the ceremony, which is in a traditional Catholic church. Her fiancé's parents, who are paying for almost all of the wedding, do not want anyone who is not baptized, no one with kids out of wedlock, and no unmarried couples who are living together. I have two children from two different people, and I didn't marry either of their fathers. She said a lot of people are being uninvited to the ceremony, but I'm still welcome to come to the reception. That's just their demands for footing the bill for everything. I was fucking pissed. I'm used to being judged for being a young, unmarried mom, but not by a person I trusted. I told her I won't be going to the wedding at all. Reception be damned. She started crying and said it wasn't her choice, but she couldn't change their minds. I told her she's a hypocrite because she has already slept with her fiancé, and if she really is choosing money for a single day over me and my kids, who she claims she loves. She pretty much begged me to reconsider, but I told her I respected myself and my children too much for that. I know it was a hard choice for her to make, but I feel like shit being judged for my kids and my past choices. Am I the asshole for telling her I won't come to her wedding? I focused on my career and since I am single, I wasn't sure if having a baby would ever happen. So when I found out I was pregnant, I was overjoyed. My brother is married but has made it very clear that he will be child free. I got a shirt for my nephew to wear that says, this is what an awesome big cousin looks like. I wanted him to wear it during our family dinner. My sister was the first one to notice the shirt and everyone immediately began to assume it was my sister-in-law who was pregnant. I wasn't hurt at them assuming this because she is married. I was hurt because my sister-in-law didn't try to correct them. She just went along with it and began to rub her flat belly while laughing. I tried to explain, but they all didn't hear me and just continued to fawn over my sister-in-law. I got up and went home. I received multiple texts saying I'm an asshole for making this all about me and I'm just bitter. Morning, my sister-in-law must have finally let us slip that she is not pregnant. They have all now called me to apologize saying that they all just got caught up in the moment. My sister-in-law sent me a message that said the way I chose to announce was how she wanted to do it if she ever got pregnant. She said that since she is not ever having a child, she wanted to experience what the moment would be like. To me, there's no fixing this. I will eventually forgive them, but I don't want to do a second announcement so they feel better. Am I the asshole? Today's my niece's birthday and she just went to college, so I thought I'd get her a laptop for her birthday. Now, I'm a student myself, but I still want to give her something special, so I searched for a great used laptop and I found a decent Toshiba. I sold my PSP and some other things so I can afford it. So there we were at the dinner table opening presents and she opened mine and had this grim look on her face. This is it? I thought you'd buy me a brand new one. No, I can't afford it. It's the best I can do. Well, I want a brand new one, not this. This sucks. Worst present ever. She then shoved the laptop and box across the table and it fell on the floor. I picked it up and walked out and my cousin tried to stop me, but I just said I would never give her anything ever again. She even had the nerve to call back and ask for the laptop. What is the most ungrateful thing you've seen someone do? My boyfriend of four years proposed to me. I was extremely shocked because our relationship has been rocky the past year. As surprising as it is, I still felt overwhelmed with joy and excitement. He seemed thrilled and even had tears in his eyes while asking. I felt so emotional. The person I had loved for four years had asked me to marry them. But the thought of the randomness of the proposal couldn't leave my head. I practically slept on separate couches for the past three months. It was unsettling and confused me. Fast forward to the day after Valentine's Day and my fiancé breaks down and tells me that he can't marry me. He said it wouldn't be right and he wouldn't be doing it for the right reasons. I was confused and lost and all I could do was question him about why he proposed and make me so happy. Finally, he confessed to me that my parents offered him $100,000 if he would propose to me. My family is decently well off and they promised him that after marriage, he would be well taken care of and won't have any struggle. This was something that he said he couldn't turn down, but he felt wrong and sick about living a lie. I went to confront my parents and they claimed it was true, but they only did it for my happiness since it's something they knew I wanted so bad. Am I the asshole for not continuing a relationship with my parents? This is now the hardest time of my life and I feel extremely guilty, but also have so much emotion and hatred for them.